Hey everyone, I'm making my games in C++ and I want to show you my project setup for the game I'm currently working on. I can show you this quickly, it's a 2D top-down bullet heaven. And what's different compared to other ones is that there are a lot of enemies, like over a thousand at the same time. That comes with its own implementation challenges. But going back to the code, which this video is focused on and not as much on the game, I want to start by giving you an overview of my implementation and the first thing you might immediately notice is that I don't have a traditional Visual Studio solution set up. So I don't have a solution file or project file. I'm using Visual Studio basically only as a file explorer, text editor and terminal in one application. The reason for that is that I want to keep my project setup simple. Like when I first started making games in C++, I was using CMake or Premake because that was what I was learning from other people to use. But now I think that is, at least for my purposes, completely over the top. I'm making my game solo for one platform that is Windows and I don't need a complicated build system. I can show you my batch script I use to build the project in case you want to copy that approach. I'm creating a build directory, link a couple of lib files that are by the way except for one all part of Windows. I know there has been a conversation about that in my first video, so maybe I can clarify this now that I'm aiming to only use libraries that are already part of Windows and I don't like to use third-party libraries. The exception I'm making here though is the free type library because text rendering is the most boring part of making a game engine, at least for me. In the future I might look into getting rid of this library though. But going back to building the project, I'm compiling one C++ file that I just called start and in there all my other C++ files I'm using are included. And I'm only using C++ files and not header files because I just want to compile everything into one compilation unit. The reason for people to use header files, at least as far as I understand it, is to reduce compile times. But my project isn't that big that I would have long build times. I can show you this, they are almost instant. And working with header files means you have to maintain two places at once. So anyway, that's why I'm including C++ files and not header files. And I can basically go line by line through the start file and give you an overview on how this project is set up. And then maybe another time I can go into more details in other files if you're interested. So let's start at the top. I'm defining a path to my asset folder, which is different depending on if it is a debug build or not. Because when it's a debug build, I build the executable into the build folder and use the assets directly in my project. But when I publish the project, I copy everything in a publish folder, including the assets, so there's everything in this one folder. Then next I'm including my math library, which I'm just reusing every project and maybe here and there I add something. I found this very educational in the beginning to implement the math library myself and I can only recommend that if you are learning to make your own engine to also write the math library self, especially when you're making a 3D game engine. Knowing how matrices work and how you can use them to convert a point from one coinage system to another is really fundamental and will probably even help you when you are not using your own engine. If you're using Unity for example, these kind of coinage system changes are happening when you for example call screen to world point or world to screen point. Then next I'm including my core library. These are also files that I'm reusing between projects. Then I'm including the UI library, which currently has dependencies on some of the game code up here, which I'm not really happy about because I'm using some assets and shaders that I'm using in the game as well. And I'm probably gonna change that at some point, but for now it's not that much of a problem and I've only just started implementing UI in this game, so I might still change some of the UI library code and then this dependency might solve itself. Then we have some audio code. This is probably gonna move in its own directory at some point or become part of the core. 
and then we have all the game related files including UI implementations. And then there is the main function that Windows is calling when the game starts. The first thing I'm doing here is to record the start time so I can use that later to get things like how much time passed since the start of the game and how much time it took to render one frame. And I'm also using this time as a seed for the random functions. Then I'm creating the window which needs the instance we are getting from Windows and I'm also passing in a title here. I have shown the window creation code before, but I can go into more details in the future if you want. Then I enable some OpenGL functions like face culling and blending. Then I initialize all the systems of the engine and the game. For example, I load all the assets the game is going to use like textures and shaders and I load the map I want to play on. And then we come to the main update loop of the game. The first thing I'm doing here is limit the FPS at 60. The getTickCount function has an accuracy of 60 milliseconds, so 60 FPS. So as long as the tick count isn't changing, I'm not doing anything. I'm just doing this in the beginning of a project that's more or less empty, so the CPU isn't always grinding away at 100% producing a thousand frames per second. That's totally unnecessary and I can save some power with this. When the game is closer to release, I'm probably going to remove this here and make it an option the players can choose if and how much they want to limit the FPS. Then after this, I calculate how much time has passed since the start of the game and how much time it took to render the last frame, which could be more than 16 milliseconds. And then we have the Windows message loop, which is directly copied out of the Windows documentation. It just means that we are going through all the messages Windows sends our game and pass them to a function in the window file that handles these events. And if you get a quit message, for example when the player plays in windowed mode and closes the window by pressing the X button, then we exit the update loop at the end and release all the resources that were allocated. Then after the message loop I check if the window is active meaning if it is in the foreground, because when it's not, because the player may be tapped out, then I just skip the rest of the update loop and don't draw any new frames. The player isn't looking at the game at this point anyway, so no need to use the CPU and GPU in this time. After that, I'm binding a frame buffer that supports multi-sampling. That way I can get some anti-aliasing. Then I clear the frame buffer, and then I update at first the input system, so I can check for example if the player pressed any mouse buttons. Then I first check some basic inputs that have not something directly to do with the game, like I close the game when the player presses escape, or I enter windowed mode when I press F1. Then another thing I have here just for debug purposes is that I draw a debug grid if I press F2. And then I update all the game systems. The stats calculator I only just implemented recently and I'm either gonna move this somewhere else or rename the function that it's also called update. And then after the updates I draw all the things. The order here is by the way important since I haven't enabled dev testing. And I'm using the same shader bindings for two different shaders that's why they are rebound here before I draw the UI. I'm not super happy with this approach, but I'm also not happy with having to shader bindings that do the exact same thing, so I'm probably going to do something about this in the future. And then before I swap the buffers to render the new image, I split the multi-sampled frame buffer to the one that is going to be drawn. And then at the end, when the update loop is over, I release all the resources I allocated and close the window. If you want to see more about the implementation of this game, let me know. There are definitely a lot more files we could go through. But until then, thank you for watching and see you next time.